This camp, although small in its prisoner's number terms, became famous for two reasons. Firstly, at the liberation, foreign correspondents arrived at the camp along with the Red Army units, thanks to whom the world first learned about the atrocities committed by Nazi punishers in concentration camps on the Soviet Union territory. Secondly, probably nowhere else have we seen such huge bonfires, a gruesome picture murdered prisoners' bodies laid with logs. Tata labor camps. During its relatively short existence, established in the September 1943 and liberated by the Red Army in the September 1944, the Kluge concentration camp was the largest in the Estonian camp system and stood out for its personnel and humanity. The camp was established by the German organization Tata, Workers' Army, and its main body consisted of Jews from the Latvia ghettos, Lithuania and Poland. According to some reports, the camp also housed Finnish citizens. Before the Jews' arrival, there were Soviet war prisoners and people from Leningrad region frontline. The cautious guards shaved the women's heads to prevent them from escaping. The men's heads were shaved down to their heads back. The prisoners were mostly used in the transport unloading, in logging and in concrete factory build on the campgrounds. The day's work lasted from 16 to 18 hours with horrific torture, a string waiting for those who, in the guard's opinion, did not work hard enough, attempt to sit down to rest or fell over. Thus, say Troop, one of the few survivors told the extraordinary commission after the camp was liberated. I belong to 300 men, a group carrying cement, 150 kilograms sacks from the factory to the station. 150 meters. Behind us, the porters were the overseers. They beat those heads who did not show enough diligence with thick sticks. As a result, we did not walk, but had to run with such a load. The punishments for the guilty varied. For example, the prisoners recalled an SS man nicknamed the Six-Legged Hauptgruppenfuhrer Kurt Stehe would walk with his dog. On command, he would attack weakened prisoners, biting them, sometimes severing their arms or legs to the bone. The same dog would also help his master identify those who had dared to keep a piece of bread in their pockets. The culprit fate depended entirely on Stahi. If he was in a bad mood, he would simply give the dog a command and the dog would be at his mercy biting a throat. If the SS man was in a good mood, he would give the culprit 25, sometimes 75, strokes with a stick. All the inmates were divided into so-called hundreds, which were commanded by someone from the camp administration. The hundred differed from one another only in the way they abused the prisoners. From the former prisoner Zatrup, interrogation protocol. Each hundred had its own tormentor. Steinberg was especially furious. He hit heads with a shovel and a turnchen, and also Carol and Dubovsky. Dubovsky once broke the worker's levi leg. Punishment for misbehavior. The most popular punishment among the camp guards was beating on the bench. The guilty would be laid with his head down, an executioner would sit on his head, and the other would beat him. The prisoner had to count the blows loudly. If he failed to count, it would start all over again. Similarly, if a prisoner lost his mind, he would be brought back with the water and the previous blows would be reset. Not only could they be beaten for misbehavior, the list of bullying was huge. Prisoners were food deprived for several days, simply kicked beaten with sticks or buoyed on metal wires. In addition, those who had done big time were simply tied to a tree for a few hours or days. Moreover, it did not depend on the weather. 
the unfortunate person would either die in the heat or die from the cold. Sometimes prisoners were killed just for fun. Thus, according to the survivors, Uder Sharfur Gent, the camp orderly, hacked to death 23 elderly prisoners with an axe. Curing and killing. Several infants born in the camp were thrown alive into the furnace on the camp commander. Lager Fuhrer orders. One baby was the first personally strangled by Unter Schaffer Fuhrer Bar. An additional bullying was the camp hospital. There were only eight people allowed in there. As a result, only those prisoners who had over 38 degrees A temperature were allowed in. If there were more prisoners, Camp Dr. Batman would inject Evipan under their skin, from which they died quickly and in agony. According to Batman's report, the average monthly death rate was about the prisoner's total number 10%, which he attributed to corporal punishment and confinement conditions. Prisoner's Destruction The most terrible day was the 1944-19th of September. When due to the Red Army rapid advance, it was decided to destroy the camp prisoners. For this purpose, the 30 SS men, reinforcement, and about 110 police officers from local collaborators arrived in the morning. During the morning formation, it was announced that the camp was being prepared for evacuation. To speed up the process, about 300 of the strongest men were selected, who were taken to the forest to harvest firewood. About 700 Estonians were sent to help the prisoners, who evaded mobilization into the German troops. The harvest firewood was taken down to the clearing and laid in the first layer, which became the bonfire's base. After that, the woodcutters were ordered to lie face down on the prepared site. The unfortunate were shot in the head, a new layer of bonfire was laid on top, and the prisoners on the next group were brought in. In this way, four or five layer bonfires were formed. After all the procurement workers, including Estonians, were executed, the guards began to bring prisoners from the camp. From the Lubov Shapiro interrogation protocol, a prisoner in Kluge camp on September 30th, 1944, on the 1944, 19th of September, in the morning as usual, the Germans came to our barrack, told all the men together and go to the campground, where they put everyone on the ground and led them away in small groups on the woods. After a while, we heard shots in the woods nearby. Then the Germans came again, under heavy guard, led 34 Jews to the wood again. Then we began to suspect that the Germans would shooting all the campers. The first to be executed were women, adolescents and elderly prisoners. In the camp itself, realizing that they would not be able to kill everyone, the punishers began to herd the prisoners in groups into a wooden barn, where the prisoners were shot and the next group would be let in. After the hut was filled with corpses, it was burned to the ground. However, it lately turned out that the persons of Jewish nationality had been burned alive in the barracks. This was revealed under interrogation by the former Kluge camp guard August Sinepalo. After a while, the Kier guard came to our room and told us to go and listen to the Jews shouting. The others and I went out. The barracks were half burned, and the people's screams and groans were coming from there. We could hear them 500 meters away from the burning house. Ouch! Ouch! shouts could be heard. I heard the screams for half an hour, which faded and intensified. When I went home half an hour later, the shouting was still going on. The remaining prisoners were simply shot in the barracks. Nevertheless, the punishers were in a hurry, as the Red Army was already in Tallinn, so some managed to escape by miracle, such as a teenager who survived thanks to an SS man in attention. We were stopped at a barracks. An SS man came up to me and told me to go forward to the barracks. I realized that I was going to die, and I trembled as I crossed the barracks threshold. The German said to me very affectionately, Boy, are you trembling, boy? And in the same second, he shot me twice, in the neck and in the back. One bullet hit me through and through, the other remained in my body. 
However, I did not lose conscience and I pretended I was dead. When the Red Army entered the camp, the soldiers, officers, and foreign journalists' eyes were filled with the horrific picture. Have burned corpses on extinguished fires in the forest, several dozen people around the camp killed while trying to escape, mountains of bodies in the barrack and charred remains on the wooden barrack site. According to the Extraordinary Commission, on the 19th September 1944, about the Jewish nationality, one and a half thousand person, about 800 Soviet citizens and war prisoners, as well as 700 Estonian citizens who evaded conscription into the German army were shot in Kluge camp. The prisoners' remains were solemnly buried on the 7th of October 1944. Soon, a monument was erected as a burial site. It was the first monument erected on a concentration campsite.